old magic cards are worth money. And I'm not just talking about reserve list cards. Well, here we go again. Welcome back, everyone. MTG Moxman here. I hope you guys are all having an awesome day wherever you are in the world of magic. And of course, if you're new to my channel, thanks for checking out my content. Thanks for finding me out here in the crazy world of YouTube. I appreciate it. If you had a good time, hit that subscribe button. It's free to do. It doesn't cost you anything, but it does support this channel and help me get closer to the goal of 10,000 subscribers. Thanks a lot, guys. Now, in case you guys didn't know you are new to the channel, I like talking reserve list. There's a lot of money there, a lot of collectability and investability. People love it. But you know that's not the only place you can invest in magic. There's cards everywhere. But what goes under the radar a lot of times, other than people on this channel who we seem to talk to, you know, we, we talk about this topic a lot, on my Discord, on my emails, in the comments section, and that is cards that can be reprinted but probably won't, and old cards on old card stock. That's right. They may be able to reprint certain magic cards. But when you're talking about first printings, Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, The Dark, Legends, Antiquities, Arabian Nights, The Four Horsemen, those original sets were all made on cardstock, number one, that doesn't exist anymore. You can't get that stuff. It's a fact of life. Deal with it. But they have a very unique look. They are a piece of magic history. Finding them in good condition is hard in the best of times. And then realizing that they're probably not reprinting these cards anyway is another facet that people have to latch on to. They can reprint Twiddle a thousand times. They can just keep reprinting it. But they're not going to reprint an Alpha Twiddle. Alpha's gone by. Or a Beta Twiddle. Or an Unlimited Twiddle. It's not coming back again. They can reprint Benelish Hero, but they probably won't reprint Creatures with Banding. And finding an Alpha, a Beta Unlimited, look at the prices of some of these cards and you'll come to understand. Although these cards could be reprinted and are reprinted, the OG original cards from Magic the Gathering are all rising in price every single month of every single year. There is always less stock available and more demand being pressed on the few cards that are out there. Supply and demand, people, which means these cards are going to rise. This happens all the time in regular markets in the world. Why would you think it wouldn't happen in Magic the Gathering? If you're an old school player and you want to have four Benelish heroes and you've got to have Alpha, you're talking quite a bit of money. If you want Beta, a little bit less. Unlimited, probably 20, 30 bucks a piece. You see where I'm going with this? It's 20, 30 dollars, but if you go to Revised, it's like a dollar. If you go to fourth edition, it's probably 50 cents or less. OG original printings of cards are just going up in value. But more so when you get to the old sets that are just not coming back around again. When you look at Arabian Nights cards, the lowest print run in Magic, 5 million cards, okay? As the first expansion printed, it has the lowest print run because they didn't know where things were going. Yes, cards like Alpha, Beta, Unlimited are probably even lower than that. But I'm saying for an expansion set, look where we're talking about here. 5 million cards. How many are really left out there? I know lots of people who have been buying these cards and collecting them, including myself, trying to finish off my set of Arabian Nights. I want a set of the first expansion. But those cards go up every day, and every day I look, I'm like, oh, it's a little more expensive to get my hands on one of those cards I might need. The same can be said for cards from the dark, which have finally started being noticed. If you're missing out on that, yeah, get some while they're cheap. Look for near mint commons and uncommons they will go up in value over time. How about the people who are looking for alpha, beta, unlimited, near mint, or lightly played basic lands? Not like they're a dollar. Even though it's a basic land, getting those black borders, and with no edge wear, no wear and tear on the card, people are willing to pay a very pretty penny to get their hands on those cards for deck construction to be able to bling out their deck. People used to go after... Um, I guess what, 2013 Dragon's Maze? I built my very first fo all foil deck. Foils are so common now. But guess what? People realized you can't repeat the Alpha Lands or the Beta Lands. It just wouldn't be the same. So those cards 
on that old cardstock with that old image. That is the new bling. That is the new flash. But the difference is those cards are never coming back where they can reprint Dragon's Maze. They can reprint the deck I built for probably pennies on the dollar now because foils are just so common. But foils have their place as well. Forget the new foils that curl like Pringles. Look back to the original foils. Look back when they did Legacy. Look at 7th edition foils. Take a look at cards even from Shards of Alara. When you look at foil cards from older Magic sets, you will be paying a pretty penny because they don't curl, they're built on good card stock, and they were much harder to get, they were more difficult to get your hands on, which means people pay a lot more for them. It's all about rarity, collectability, supply, and demand. And what a lot of players have noticed is these old sets are where it's at. Because the set runs were so small compared to anything nowadays that the value is being forced into those old sets. ABU, man. Alpha, Beta, Unlimited. You can go for revised. There is a place for that at some point. But the print run is so high, it's going to take decades to eat that stuff up. Really, to eat it up. As far as I've calculated out. Alpha, Beta, Unlimited. There's still lands available, but you're paying a lot of money. Individual cards, like say a Black Knight or a White Knight, Beta or Unlimited, or even uh, go for an Alpha, you are talking a lot of money. Even though it's been reprinted, those cards have value. More value than you would expect. Only if you don't know. I'm telling you, these cards will continue to rise in price. They're going to go up. If you have some, hold the line. Just like a reserve list card, they're not going anywhere. You don't want to sell early if you don't have to sell. You want to hold those cards and harness the profits that will be available to you in the decades to come. Because that type of bling is never going anywhere. There is nothing better than even when I play a commander game and I bring out a City of Shadows near mint looking beautiful and nobody knows what it is. They're like, I've never seen that card before. Because they haven't. They started playing in 2015, Khans of Tarkir, and they've never seen these cards. And there's some conversations, stories that just can't be had unless you've lived in that time and gotten access to those cards somehow. If you've managed to pick up one of those cards, that is a pride and joy moment. Having an old card enter your collection and hold on to it. And you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars. There's lots of 15 and 20 cent commons from things like the dark that you can still get your hands on, fallen empires and the like. But for how long those cards will be around there, who knows? But the value is going up daily. They are being driven up over time as more people come to recognize the collectability of it and the investment value of getting in on the ground floor and watching things rise. You can buy a Time Elemental anywhere, but you want to get your hands on the Legends Time Elementals with the beautiful black border and the original OG printing. That's what people are seeking out and trying to get their hands on. Most people don't see it until it's too late. People on this channel, people who have watched me in the last little while, they recognize that. They've been buying, they've been collecting. The big whales who sneak a peek at my channel once in a while, yeah, they're there too. The Taco King himself knows exactly what he's talking about. These cards are going up. I'm tracking the values all the time. And I can see where they're headed. It'll take a while to get there, but there will come a time when unlimited lands are 20, 30 bucks. Beta lands are a couple of hundred, and you might be paying 500 bucks for an alpha land if it's in near mint shape. Scary stuff, I know, but where else can it go? Original artwork, original printings, on original cardstock, in mint condition, just like a mint condition hockey card of Wayne Gretzky versus a heavily played. Heavily played is not going to have anywhere near the value of a near mint opened rookie card. Hornus Wagner, near mint. Think about the millions of dollars cards like that draw in and tell me it's not going to happen. I see it. I don't know why other people don't sometimes. They can argue all they want. It's the way it's going to be. I'm going to take my chances. I'm going to hold on. Where's my stack? Where's my stack? I have a stack somewhere. Where's my stack? I'm going to hold on to my collection of Alpha. I'm going to hold on to my Betas, my Alpha Twiddles. I'm going to hang in there all my Circle Protections and my Guardian Angels, my Holy Armors, Unholy Armors, my Walls of Wood. I will hold on to my stuff. And I'm never letting it go. Because I believe that value will be there in the future. And I'm not willing to risk losing a penny 
over stuff that you know I've just had for 20 years and hasn't lost value. Those people who desire those cards will only continue to grow in the future as far as I can tell. Unless the game goes to zero. In that case, it's okay. I've had those cards for 20 years. I really didn't lose anything. Holding on to your cards doesn't cost you a thing if you can afford to hold on to them. But somebody who pays a pretty penny to get those cards, they're not likely to let it go for anything less than what they paid. And that's what will drive the market forward. Somebody who pays 20 or $30 for a beta land. Somebody who says, oh, I bought an alpha for like $60. Those are going to be the same people who may say, I want a demonic tutor, but I want an alpha or a beta, a collector edition. They're willing to pay the price to get those cards, to bling out the deck, to make it as cool as they possibly can, because that's part of the game, part of the nature of collecting and investing in stuff. You see value there when other people don't. Some people just get lucky and hold on to their cards. Other people see that value ahead of time and grab the cards as they come due. But this will be a supply and demand issue. The supply is way less than the demand. And as people recognize the value, they will be willing to reach into their wallets and pay for those cards. And you will see prices just trickle upward naturally over time. And there's not a lot that can be done about it by Wizards or anybody else out there. Enjoy the ride. I know I do each and every day. Watching cards I want to get my hands on that I can't quite afford. And the ecstasy of finally reaching a goal and grabbing one of the cards you've always wanted to get. It's the nature of how the game is played in life. You can't have everything, but you can get those small goals and be happy you got there. And that is again why people won't just sell this stuff off after they get their hands on it. It's the pride of ownership. The story that goes along with reaching that collectible level. Be it a foil or just an old school card with the original artwork and the original card itself. It's amazing to see. And anyone who tells me differently, ah, prove me wrong. I'd like to see you prove me wrong. I, I would love to know that these cards will be back down to five bucks each and be affordable. But I really have this feeling that that is not going to happen. So everyone, thanks a lot for hanging out with me. I hope you had some deep thoughts, did some deep thinking like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And thank you for the fish. Watched a little Army of Darkness and just thought, do I have any of these cards? Maybe I should be holding on to them. Yeah, maybe you should. Hold the line, everyone. Looking forward to seeing your comments in the comments section. Have an awesome day today. Have an Alpha Beta Unlimited day. So let me get this straight. I've got wonderful patrons on this channel. They support me each and every day. Of course they deserve a thank you every day. Patrons make the world go round. Remember that, everyone. And hey, if you're hoping to get on the Patreon, check it out in April. There might be a slot. Hi, guys. What are you doing here? You're like really close to my face for some reason. I, I don't know why, but I'm just, I'm just so glad you guys are here. It, it's awesome. You made it to the end of another video and you deserve to, you deserve nothing. It's Friday. I'm getting out of here. I'll see you guys on Sunday on the live stream because you guys are too awesome for me today. Just too amazing. I, your skills are just undeniable. I, I can't help it. I gotta go. I gotta go.